So when both these blocks are printed horizontally, how do we make it so that the pin and the hole fit perfectly every single time? In this video, we're gonna go through nine different designs that you have not seen before about how to have a horizontal pin and hole fit just right. So what is the reason for wanting to print holes horizontally along with their pins? Well, the pins themselves, if you're printing them horizontally, they're in the plane of the layer lines. So this pin is much stronger than if you were printing vertically. And that's a fine and dandy deal. The same thing goes with the holes. You sometimes just have to put holes into the side of the part. Now, the issue with these types of pins is that you can end up with these types of problems where you have to have support underneath them in order to have them be crisp. And one of the worst things that you can ever do is just design a cylindrical pin straight out the side with a standard circular hole right there. None of these actually work. If you've ever printed them, you will find out that the holes end up kind of sagging or being oblong because the vertical edges sag just a little bit creating a bad hole. So let's just start with very basic good design practices. Number one, you don't want a simple cube with a simple cylinder standing out the side. You want to go through and optimize it a little bit. You want to chamfer the bottom, round the quarters, but now you want to go and focus on the pin and the hole themselves. The pin itself, go ahead and give a chamfer to the tip of. The reason you want to use a chamfer rather than a fillet is that a chamfer is a consistent overhang of 45 degrees as opposed to a fillet, which goes from infinite overhang to nothing. And then you equally want to fill it to the inserts to the holes so that they can slide together reliably and have a really nice fit right there. But you still have the tolerance problem of the holes, which will be always a little bit out of shape. So the very first thing that you want to do in order to get rid of that sag at the top of the holes, which is sometimes done by the slicer, sometimes done by the material, sometimes done by the print resolution that you're using. In order to have a good precision of the holes, one of the simplest things that you can do is just give the holes a small corner up on top. And you can make this fairly shallow, but this allows the hole to hold its shape without causing a tolerance issue. This way the hole doesn't compress as it's printed. And of course, you wanna make sure that you have support underneath the pin itself in order to keep it crisp and not have some nasty little sagging issue. So there we go, we're done, pins and holes. You just round out all the edges and they slide together just really easily. But not really, you're still dealing with a tolerance problem. Different materials, different print settings, different infill types, different shrinkage, different slicer, different machine will all cause these holes and pins to fit together differently. So how do you create a design that works on any material, any machine, any slicer at any time without having to worry about the clearances and tolerances varying too much so that your design breaks? So let's go ahead and go into some more advanced techniques other than just a pen and hole. Remember how I showed you this design before, which has to have the support underneath? This support ended up just being wasted material that is flicked away. Why don't you use that as actually part of the design? This way you improve the rigidity of the part and are able to use it more. This is what you end up with. You take the pen and you apply a chamfer to the bottom and top of it so that it can be printed in any orientation and you don't have to worry about support generation holding the pen in the correct shape. And of course you have to mirror it over here on the other side so it's a nice keyhole. This allows you also to use those flanges as effectively tension areas where you have the sidewalls, which are much higher tolerance, sliding together to hold it together without having to worry about the tops and bottoms of this pin interfacing with the hole itself. It's much more reliable. You get to use material rather than throwing it away as support and you have a much stronger side feature. But this is also sort of a waste. Why do you need a circular pen there at all if you have already chamfered it? Just go ahead and lean into it and turn it into an actual slot. With basically the slotted design, you're able to have the side compression of the hole be the only thing that is interfacing with the actual tab here. And this is better than holes because you can really tune in the fit and get along with it really well. But this is still just a standard rectangular extrusion which is then chamfered so that you don't have overhang and a rectangular hole. This doesn't really necessarily fit always because if we change to a different material, the fit would be different. So how can you create something robust? Well, the easiest way to do that is to make something thicker. If you make that slot and make them all thicker, then what you're able to do is take this tab right here and chamfer it just slightly so that the top is narrower than the entryway to the hole and the bottom is wider than the entryway of the hole so that as you insert, it gets tighter and tighter so that you get a really good fit that comes together really well. And then if you have a couple of them slightly offset, you can make sure that you don't have this sort of offsetting issue to where it actually self-centers. So there's plenty of ways of dealing with that. But this allows you to get a really good fit rather than a potentially loose or potentially too tight type of a fit 
bit if you're relying purely on the precision of the material that you're using, which will always vary based on print settings, materials, mach machines, all of that stuff. So you wanna make your design as robust as possible so that it produces the part that you're looking for every time. But this is still inconsistent. You're still reliant on the tolerances of the machines and materials that you're dealing with. How do you make sure that this works all the time? Rather than simply having a solid slot right here, which has set dimensions, you can instead have two tabs which allow you to always fit into the slot exactly as intended with a little bit of pressure on the outer walls. And since they can flex quite a great deal, regardless of what machine you make it on, they will always work. But now the issue with this is that these are flat, smooth tabs, so it can slide out really easily. You don't get a really tight pressure fit or something that can mechanically hold on really tightly. This is fine for like a finding feature, but if you want to hold it together, it doesn't hold it together very tight. But that can be fixed with just the addition of a couple of small bumps and a couple of small holes inside of the slot itself. This way, when you press them together, they can actually interlock and now you get a nice little popping in order to hold them together. Now, this is a basic demonstration of how it works, but using these grip fins with little locking features at the end and mating features on the inside allows you to get a nice, perfect, tight fit every time that holds together really, really well, and you do not have to worry about the tolerances of the material or how much shrink there is or what print settings are being used. So you can make sure that your pins always fit right into the holes perfectly every single time. Hopefully these designs were useful to you. This is the type of thing that we go through in order to educate people how to design parts that are really manufacturable. And you want this when using external services or wanting to mass produce a 3D printed part. You want it to be as robust as possible so that you don't have to tune the design to a particular machine or process. This is especially true in places like our Teleport Print On Demand app, where you can plug the slant 3D print farm that has hundreds of machines directly into your Etsy store or your eBay store or your Amazon store, and you want your product to be made the same way. The easiest way to do that is to design the product to be manufacturable in multiple different processes at most, multiple different times. Many people get caught in the trap of designing specifically for their one machine, maybe it's their brand, their material, whatever it happens to be, and having their own particular bespoke settings. But that gets you stuck in an artisan kind of a layout, whereas if you do very simple design tweaks, you can have your part be made by anyone. This is also also particularly useful if you are selling the files to other people who want to 3D print them as well, because as soon as you sell the file and somebody prints it on a machine that isn't good, it can also create issues with the perception of your file. So by doing just a few of these small tweaks, you make really reliable, really robust types of parts that can be made by anyone, anywhere, anytime, and it will always be a really, really good quality part. Have a great day, everybody.